We are in my car, so that way I feel comfortable screaming. Hello, YouTube. My name is Michael. Your name is YouTube. And today I'm going to tell you the story of the worst apartment tour that I've ever been on in my life. It involves a possible dead body, nine cats, and me getting locked inside the house that I was touring. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to drop us right in the middle of the story because it is pretty long. I am standing in front of a house on Staten Island because I saw a Craigslist ad that said eclectic Staten Island home, room for rent bigger than most houses, porch to die. And I thought, what? Porch to die? What does that mean? Also, room bigger than most houses? Is it bigger than this house? Probably not. That's strike one. But I was intrigued, so I was standing outside the house waiting for the landlord to come outside and greet me. And from the start, she did not disappoint. Her name is Debbie. She is 60-something. She has very wiry brown hair. And that's all you need to know for now. So as the door opens, Debbie is already staring at me angry. And when she opens the door, she kind of hunches over. But more importantly, the fact that she was already staring at me as the door opened meant she was already fixed on the door before she even started to open it, which that is a move. So as she's staring at me, she looks very angry. She doesn't say a word and she pulls out her N95 mask and puts it on and puts it around her ears. And as she's doing that, I grab mine and put mine on and hers is very brown and the front is fuzzy because she's worn it so much and also she's covered in cat hair she puts on the mask and then she pulls out two purple rubber dishwashing gloves and puts them on while staring at me and i wish i could have stared back and put on my own dishwashing gloves and been like let's go debbie and then to my surprise she introduced herself by saying hey i'm debbie so glad you made it michael let's go look and i was like oh you seem nice so we enter into this place and what you notice immediately is all around you 360 degrees there is the sound of animals doing something everywhere and you can't see any of them because they're in the walls and the ceiling and the basement and they're all going like <laughs> so it, from the start i don't know if you've ever had a squirrel in your house you know it's like kind of unsettling to hear it running through your walls there was millions of them there was squirrel city and they were all going nuts P uh, pun intended to the left there's a set of stairs that are so steep it looks like a poorly designed ladder and to the right I don't know if you've ever been to an antique store, but you know when there are those stores where the owners just, anything that they can find, they just shove it into the store and they leave it there and you can't really get through. This place was like that, but done poorly. And I said to Debbie, trying to break the ice, oh, do you run an antique store? She said, no, why? To which, I, at that moment, I was like, wow, there's really no response I can make to clear this up. So I didn't say anything. I just went, mm -hmm. But I think Debbie caught on because she said, oh, my best friend just recently died. And I was like, oh, okay. And then Debbie let me in on a little secret and she said, also, he had nine cats. And I was like, no way. And she said, yeah, they're all in the basement. I put them in the basement. And I was like, whoa, I, well, I hope you feed them. And she was like, oh, yeah, 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 I live in the basement. We are going upstairs. And as we are going upstairs, the animal sounds are getting louder and louder. And I also hear human footsteps. And they're not mine. They're not Debbie's. Duh, because we're going up the stairs. But also at the same time, I should mention, Debbie is fixing the house as we go upstairs. She actually fixed a plank that I was standing on on the stairs. She nailed it back into the stairs as we were going up. So we get up to the second floor, and it's basically the exact same as the first floor but now there are plants everywhere instead of things and the plants like the roots are shooting out of the plants and like you know doing the thing that plants when they're like looking on the ground for water with their roots they're like <sighs> but I do see the porch that is going to die and I thought oh that's a pretty nice porch shame it has to get killed by Debbie after that Debbie takes me into the kitchen which the kitchen is tiny it's about as big as this shoulder to this shoulder and that's it but we both stuff ourselves in there and for some reason the animals in the house are way louder i feel like i can hear their conversations they're like little, 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 little acorns whoa this is actually getting pretty hard to ignore debbie shows me everything because there's nothing in the kitchen it's just filthy and there's a single burner but she says don't worry your kitchen is in your room this is zach's and i was like oh both of those things you said are interesting but at that point the cabinet in the kitchen is tilting to the side so debbie tries to lift it up and she's gonna nail something under it but a can of beans falls from the cabinet onto the stove and the animals in the house lose their minds you can hear them like slamming their little toes on the ground and they're like <laughs> freaking out to which Debbie made everyone know she was the queen of the house and she said Michael 
Do you hear that? And I was like, yeah. Is it the cats? Trying to give her a cover. And she said, no. And then she stood on the single burner stove and started going like this. Get out of here! Get out of here! To which the animals started fighting back and pounding their feet and they were like, this, look, look, look. and I was like, what am I watching? And Debbie looked at me and there was fire in her eyes and she said, I mean, what are they even gonna do? And I was like, who? What are they gonna watch? She got in my face and she was like, an exterminator's $5,000, Michael. What am I supposed to do? And I was like, I don't know. I think you should probably pay the $5,000. Whatever. Tensions were going crazy, so I thought this would be a good time to make a joke. So I said, well, maybe you could let the cats out and they can become friends with all the animals. And Debbie, who was very angry and previously was screaming at the animals, went, huh. <laughs> yeah, I could. And I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> I didn't know what else to say, so I walked out of the kitchen and immediately bumped in to Zach, who was very surprised, but he was not surprised that I was there. He was more surprised by the fact that he, in fact, was Zach. And I don't know if you've ever seen a movie where an actor like wakes up in someone else's body, but I feel like every single morning, Zach wakes up and goes, <sighs> Still Zach. And then Debbie, by that time, caught up and brought me to my room, which was the biggest room I have ever seen in my life. Just to put it in perspective, if one of those little animals broke out of the wall and tried to get from one side of my room to the other, they would die in the middle of exhaustion. It was massive. Here's what was in the room. There was the door to get in, then there was a closet, then there was a fireplace, and then there was a massive mirror, probably arms width wide, that broke and led to the disaster that is the end of the story, but we'll get into that in a second. Then there was a four burner stove with an oven, a sink with running water, a table, four chairs, a desk, a light over that chair, another closet, a queen size bed with a nightstand, and then just in the middle there was just a common area. So, you know, whatever. Now Debbie's giving me the tour and it already feels weird, but then we get to the mirror. And Debbie says, I love this mirror so much. The old tenant before you, this is your room. She would just sand and sand, because there's so much paint on this, Michael, you don't get to see the true beauty of what it used to look like. So she would sand every single day from morning to night. I would just hear her sanding, and I would come in and join her. And as she's saying that to me, she pulls out sandpaper from her pocket. And I was like, oh my God, she planned all this out. And she gives it to me. And I was like, okay, I think I have to do this but I didn't. She pulled out sandpaper and said, you do the honors. And I said, oh no, no, I wanna see how you do it. Smartest thing I've ever said, because the second Debbie touched the mirror, it fell and shattered. It fell onto the fireplace little stand thing and shattered and then pathetically kind of just dropped. And it was silent. And Debbie was just staring at the mirror and she said, I'm so sorry that happened, Michael. And to which I was like, oh, no big deal. You know, mirrors fall all the time. And if there was like a scruff of a neck on a mirror, that's how Debbie grabbed like the giant mirror and she just dragged it across the floor and put it in the closet. And then she came out and said, well, I'm sure you could find a better mirror at Target. I bet I, bet I can. And she said, okay, let's go see the porch. And I was like, okay. And now at this time, I'm trying to figure out how I can get out of this. So we go to the porch. It's a beautiful sunset. I'm like, wow, this is really nice. How do I get out of here? And as I'm thinking that, there's a guy like two blocks away with a motorcycle propped up that's running, but he's not moving it. And then he just grabs the throttle and the motorcycle just flies off of the stand and just like goes. And I was like, where am I? So then I start to back up and leave. And I said, thanks so much, Debbie. I will let you know. And she said, well, well, what do you think? Are you going to take it? Sorry, I had to move the camera. And that's when I knew I was in a bad situation because I am a people pleaser. So she put me on the spot and I was like, you know what? This time I really can't people please. So I said, I, well, I don't know. I have a lot of other apartments. I'm going to grab dinner with my girlfriend that's waiting for me and expecting me to return. So I really have to go. And she stood in front of me at this point And I thought, oh no, this is really bad. And she said, well, what part of the tour didn't you like? And I was like, no, 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 the, the whole tour was great. It wasn't anything like that. I just need a little bit to decide. And she said, well, how about we just do the tour again? And if there's a part that you have a question about, you just ask me the question. So I push past Debbie and I start running down the stairs and I'm like, yeah, I think I just need a little more time. Oh my God. And as I get to the door, for some reason, it's like every horror movie and I can't figure out how to unlock a deadbolt. So I'm shifting with everything. I'm like, come on, I gotta get out of here. Debbie's like fast on my tail. And she's like, well, what if you just look at Zach? 
sex room. Maybe you'll like that. And I'm like, I don't know, Debbie. I think I need more time. And I can't figure out the door still. I'm trying to pull it. It's stuck. Zach is just like floating down the stairs behind me. And he's like, is my name Zach? Yes, I think it is Zach. And all the animals are like poking out of the wall. And they're like, so, you should leave. Run, run, run. I know, I know. And I can't get the door open. And Debbie pops in front of me. And then Debbie takes a deep breath. And she's like, why won't you stay? And she was like, I really, I'm sorry. I just, you, I, I've been touring this apartment for two months. And you're the first normal person that's ever come in. And when she said that, I was like, okay. Well, I, can, I wonder why. And she opens the door and says, if $700 a month is too much, just let me know and we can lower the price down. And then I left and everything was fine. And then about an hour later, I got a phone call and I answered the phone and she was like, hi, this is Debbie from Staten Island. And I was like, okay. And she said, listen, Michael, I'm sorry about the tour. I know it was, it was, it was weird, but you know, I just had a really tough time renting this place out. And I was just like you, I was your age when I moved to New York. I'm from Ohio and you know, I had to switch my car on either side of the road for street cleaning for 15 years. So just, you know, if you stay with me or not, I hope you have a good time in New York. Like, thanks for coming by. And I was like, oh, what a sweet New York moment. Anyways though, so that was the worst apartment tour I've ever been on so far. Uh, other than that, I will see you next week where I go thrifting with my friends.